What's up everybody? I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyists and I was just sent this longer 3D Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver to review. So let's do that. Today I'm going to bring you along while I unbox it, set it up and test it out. Let's get started. So the laser showed up in a box that was about three feet by one foot and about six inches thick. And it was actually pretty light. The DHL guy didn't seem to have any trouble getting it up to my door. So if you're in an apartment, it shouldn't be too bad getting it up lots of stairs. They claim that you can assemble it in about 10 minutes. So I tried to set up a timer to show how long it took me, but instead all I captured was a warning that my iPad was low on battery. In the end, it took me about 40 minutes to put it together, but to be honest, I was watching Archer, so I was pretty distracted. Plus I kept moving the camera around to capture shots of the assembly. So I think about 20 minutes or so for assembly would be a more accurate estimate. As far as ease of assembly goes, the instructions were fairly easy to follow and all the parts were labeled clearly, which definitely helped. However, there were two things that I think were missing from the instructions. First, Longer 3D sent an air compressor and some rubber tubing with the laser, but it didn't come with any information about how to set it up or when and how to use it. Uh, it seems like it's meant to pump fumes out of the laser module, but from what I can tell, it didn't really have an impact on performance. It just seemed like an extra thing I had to plug in and it added extra noise. The second thing that I found confusing in the instructions had to do with how to focus the laser module. It does cover it, but it just says to place the focus plate on the material, drop the laser module down to the focus plate and tighten the thumb screws on the laser module. That seems pretty easy, but the instructions weren't clear on what the focus plate actually was. So I had to assume it was referring to this quarter inch piece of acrylic that came with it. Now, I know what they say about assuming, but it was the only thing that resembled the focus plate in the instructions. It just was clear instead of black. So that confused me, which to be honest, isn't very hard to do. Anyways, now that I've got this thing all assembled, let's go over some of the stats and then I'll see how it actually performs. Real quick, I do wanna mention that I don't accept payment for positive reviews. I'll either be reviewing a product that I bought myself or like in this case, I'll be reviewing a free sample of a product that a company sends me. And I'll even send it back if they want. But either way, I'll do my best to provide a complete and honest review. So with that out of the way, let's start from the beginning. Again, this is the 20 watt Ray 5 from Longer 3D, which will run you about $800 on their store, at least at the time of making this video. The working area is about 375 millimeters squared, and it claims to be able to move up to 10,000 millimeters per minute and cut up to 15 millimeter pine and eight millimeter acrylic in a single pass. It can be controlled with its built-in 3.5 inch touchscreen or over Wi-Fi, USB, iOS and Android apps, as well as SD cards for offline operation. All right, that's a lot of words, but none of them matter. What really matters is what this machine can actually do. So let's get into the juicy part and start cutting some stuff. Longer 3D actually provides a pretty comprehensive list of recommended speeds and output settings for various materials. But in the interest of time and my wallet, I won't be able to test everything on that list. Instead, I picked out a few different materials ranging from foam all the way to stainless steel that I think will allow me to accurately gauge the quality of this machine. I also wanted to mention that for the purposes of this video, I'll be filming some of the cutting up close but laser engraving can put off some really nasty fumes. So most of the time I'll be using this super cheap enclosure I made to pump all those nasty fumes out that window so somebody else can breathe them instead of me. Anyways, let's cut some
All right, so I've done a bunch of test cuts and I added some text kind of explaining what I was cutting and what settings I used. But overall, what do I think of this machine? Well, I have to say that the parameter table provided by Longer 3D isn't very accurate. I found it to be useful in like knowing where to start with the machine, but it seemed like pretty much across the board, this machine isn't as powerful as they say it is. To start, it was supposed to be able to cut through 15 millimeter pine in a single pass, but it couldn't even get through 13 millimeter pine in a single pass, and it barely made it through in two passes. Now, my first thought was that the pine I was using must have been a little bit too wet to get all the way through, but I didn't have any luck with the stainless steel either. It pretty much had no effect at the recommended settings. The engraving just wiped right off and instead of cutting it, it just marked it. The focusing process for cutting the stronger materials was a little bit weird too. It recommended focusing it with the focus plate and then lowering it by three millimeters. I'm not sure what would be the best way to accurately lower the laser module three millimeters, but I just did my best to find some material that was three millimeters thinner than the focus plate. Anyways, that's my two cents on the performance of the machine. Now let's talk about some of the more non-functional pros and cons. The first really big con for me, and maybe only for me, was that I couldn't get it to connect to my home Wi-Fi for a really silly reason. It turns out that the touchscreen keyboard that pops up doesn't contain one of the special characters in my Wi-Fi password. I tried everything I could think of, even reflashing the firmware with my Wi-Fi credentials hard-coded, but I just couldn't get it to work. Now, as weird and frustrating as that was, it did bring up one of the biggest pros I had for this machine, customer service. I reached out to Longer 3D explaining my Wi-Fi predicament, and they not only responded really quickly, but they also sent me the configuration files and the firmware binary to hopefully help me out. I was ultimately unsuccessful, but I was really happy and impressed with their support efforts. But back to the topic of UI bugs, there was also a really weird issue where I couldn't get the motors to unlock after booting up until I exited the control screen, sometimes more than once. This one wasn't as debilitating as the Wi-Fi thing, but it was definitely annoying. All right, next up, I wanna talk about the safety features. This one was a big one for me because laser engraving is not as safe as these open air companies would have you think it is. I know, pretty rich coming from the guy who just filmed a bunch of open air laser engraving. I was standing outside for the most part, okay? This machine has a tilt sensor, a flame sensor, a data connection loss shut off, and it'll stop engraving if it stays motionless for 10 seconds. And they were spotty at best. The tilt sensor, the motion sensor, and the data cutoff sensor all seemed to work most of the time, but I could not, for the life of me, get the flame sensor to work. And I tried really hard. I even took the PCB out and put the flame directly on it, which probably wasn't smart. Now, all of those are great, but the reality is the biggest dangers from these machines are the fumes and the fact that they're freaking lasers. So please, if you're using one of these machines, stick it in some sort of enclosure and pump those fumes out into your neighbor's patio area. Don't do that. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay, so the last con that I want to mention today is the cable management, or well, the lack of cable management. I'm assuming it was skipped in an effort to save a little money, but I think that raising the price 10 bucks and slapping some cable chains on there would make a huge difference. As it is, the cables bend and twist like they have a mind of their own, and a few times they twisted onto the workpiece, which got really annoying. So overall, with the bad cable management, the UI bugs, the shoddy safety features, and the fact that it couldn't cut all the way through the materials that it said it could, I'd have to give this machine a five out of 10. But taking into account the awesome customer service and the fact that it's one and a half times cheaper than all the other competitors on the market, I'd bump it back up to a five and a half. But in the end, that's just the opinion of one random YouTuber. And like one of my viewers said, that's why you never take advice from YouTubers. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the Longer 3D Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver. If you liked what you saw, then I'll have a link down in the description to the machine. And if I missed anything or screwed anything up, let me know in the comments or hop on my Discord server. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.